I like a story where the stakes feel real and there's some actual risk. Obviously in the end, we know the good guys will win, but like, I like it when there's a tense moment where they do actually lose big and you're not sure how or if they'll be able to bounce back, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today with one of the darkest arcs that I have ever read within the Archie Sonic comics. So let me set the scene. Eggman is threatening the world with a new death egg, which he had been building in secret right under everybody's noses. But the Freedom Fighters waste no time springing into action to stop whatever nefarious things Eggman has planned as Sonic, Tails, and Sally fly towards the death egg. Tails stays outside in the tornado as Sonic and Sally bust into the death egg and upon entering inside of the hull, the two find a strange chamber with some kind of tube in the middle. The duo doesn't have long to figure out what all of this is for as they find themselves confronted with Silver Sonic, who looks just as funky as he did in the video games. Sonic is excited and slightly overly cocky as he takes on his metallic counterpart, which frustrates Sally as they have a mission to do. Sonic overall is too preoccupied fighting Silver Sonic, which prompts Sally to go on ahead while Sonic does his thing. As she runs away, Eggman deploys a turret from the wall, gunshots are heard, and then Sonic screams in shock before being knocked out by Silver Sonic and Eggman toasts to his victory as he presses a button which activates the Death Egg's true purpose, which is to reboot the entire universe so that he can start fresh in world domination. In doing this, everything starts to fade to white as Sonic rushes towards Sally. Now, keep in mind, this is still me setting up the scene for the story that we're going to be talking about, but it's already started with some pretty high-stakes stuff like Sally dying and a much darker tone than we're used to with a lot of these Archie Sonic stories as it killed off one of the main characters. Things from here get a little bit confusing, and I'm going to skip ahead a little bit as I give you the spark notes of the next three-ish issues that come. Basically, Sonic finds himself in another world, one that is much more similar to the 2D platformers. While here, he encounters Snively, who he beats with ease and rescues a bunch of animals, including Sally along with some of the other Freedom Fighters. But strangely, none of them seem to have any of their previous memories, and instead, they all act like this is the first time they've met. They then go on to fight Eggman a number of times as they traverse through familiar locations from the video games. As this happens, slowly, Sonic, Sally, and Eggman begin to regain their memories from the previous world and the events that had just transpired. Sonic ends up going super while fighting Eggman near the end, and while in that super form, he uses Chaos Control to return the world back to its previous state, but with an extra 10 seconds before Sally had been shot which causes everything to again fade to white as both he and Sally realize that everything will be okay this time. So now, with all of that out of the way, you know everything that you need to know before we get into the meat and potatoes of this story. So, with Sonic's extra knowledge, he spin dashes into Silver Sonic before rushing to pick up Sally. As they speed past the turret, it misses them and fires at Silver Sonic instead, which then allows the duo to escape as Nicole, the Freedom Fighter's AI, disables Eggman's reset button, while this is happening, Eggman presses the button, but thanks to Sonic, Nicole, and Sally, nothing happens, which causes Eggman to snap. And honestly, he looks really scary looking in the scene while he does it before recomposing himself and moving on to what he calls Stage 2 as he flies off within the Death Egg. Now back to Sonic and company, the group try to figure out what the Death Egg is powering, but the most they can deduce is that it's being redirected to the level below them, and that Nicole can't get through Eggman's security firewalls to figure out what it's powering. So, the group decides to head down, but before they can, Sonic rushes by to make sure that there's no turrets this time that might fire at Sally, because let's be real, we can only go through one of these resets so many times. Once down there, they're confronted by Eggman, who announces that he's built a world roboticizer, which will not only roboticize every living being, but will also detonate anything that is mechanical, meaning that all of Gun's forces would be terminated, new Robotropolis would be destroyed as it's made of nanites, Sonic's dad would die because he's a robot, as would Bunny as she's a cyborg, and Nicole who is their AI would also be terminated. But everything that wouldn't be destroyed would be left as his robotic slaves, including his own Dark Egg Legion, which he is willing to transform as well. Sonic tries to stop Eggman, but before he can, he finds himself stopped by Metal Sonic. And then just as he shrugs off Metal Sonic, the heavily damaged Silver Sonic reappears for a rematch. Sonic takes on his two robotic doppelgangers as well as Eggman, which gives Sally the perfect opportunity to sneak off and try to stop this global catastrophe before it happens. Under the roboticizer, Sally patches Nicole in as they attempt to hack it, but much to their dismay, Nicole finds that it'll take hours for her to be able to get in and that there's no possible way to stall the process from happening. Nicole points out that the only way to stop it would be to reverse the beam so that it destroys the death egg, but in doing that, Sally would be roboticized herself. Without hesitation, 
Sally commands Nicole to return home and leave her with the executable to reverse the beam so that Nicole doesn't get destroyed while Sally gets roboticized. Nicole tries to reason with Sally to not go through with this, but Sally cuts her off as she reveals that she knows she's been given a second chance and that she plans on using it to save everyone. Meanwhile, Sonic finds himself pinned down by both metallic Sonics, as well as Eggman who is holding a gun. Sonic calls out for Sally, and as he does, Sally reads Nicole's goodbye message which was left behind. She then closes her eyes, thinks of Sonic and the good memories they've shared together as she presses the button and says goodbye. This causes the global roboticizer to activate, much to Eggman's joy, but that joy is short-lived as suddenly everything starts to go wrong, as causing both Silver and Metal Sonic, as well as the Death Egg, to break apart. From the rubble of the heavily damaged Death Egg, which is hardly keeping afloat, a defeated Eggman emerges, and not too long after this, so does Sonic as he gloats over his victory. Eggman attempts to fight Sonic, but is easily defeated in this weakened state. But then suddenly, a metallic fist emerges from the rubble, and a fully roboticized Sally comes out ready to destroy Sonic as he looks in fear, and Eggman maniacally laughs over his minor victory that he had just achieved over Sonic. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I read this, as well as when I was reading this comic to write down my notes, I did begin to tear up because this feels like such a major sacrifice for the greater good and honestly I'm a sucker for stories like this. It doesn't take long before Sally attacks Sonic, who just isn't ready or willing to fight one of his closest friends, despite the fact that she's now holding him by the neck and ready to kill him. Eggman toys with different ideas of what he should do now that he's captured and defeated Sonic. He begins to debate different ideas such as having Sally walk into the incinerator while holding Sonic and burning the both of them together, which is insane. But that's Eggman in these stories, honestly. That guy's off the rails. Ultimately though, Eggman decides to have Sally hold Sonic over an open pit as she dangles him high above the sky, above his impending doom. Sonic attempts to reach out to Sally, but like Silver says, it's no use! And she lets go, dropping Sonic to fall to his death, as Eggman waves while grinning ear to ear as he takes in his victory over his longtime enemy. This moment ends up feeling like a major victory towards Eggman, because even though in the grand scheme of things he only managed to roboticize one person, it was a huge blow to Sonic as well as everybody else on Mobius to lose someone like Sally, and it would leave the Freedom Force in a very uncertain state. Eggman orders Snively to begin a full assault, but luckily for Sonic, Eggman and his forces are unable to do so, as planned because they've taken too much damage, but unfortunately for Sonic, Eggman does send down what he calls Project Titan and Deadly Cuddles. We're gonna take a quick break from Sally, just as I explain what happens to all of her friends during all of this madness, but I'm gonna keep it brief so we can get back to our main subject. So, while this is happening, Tails swoops down and rescues Sonic before he hits the ground, and shortly after being rescued, Tails asks him what happened to Sally. At this moment, Sonic urges Tails to fly them back up to the Death Egg so that he can rescue her. From the sky, a giant metal orb falls from the Death Egg, which the tornado manages to just narrowly avoid. Once this orb hits the ground, it decimates an entire residential area, causing mass panic in the streets, as Cream tells her mother not to worry as the Freedom Fighters will come and save them shortly. This orb begins to unfold and displays its true form as Titan Metal Sonic, which honestly just looks absolutely fantastic is one of the coolest adaptations in this comic. But also, like, why does Big the Cat look so awesome here? It's wild to see everybody run around in fear, but then there's Big, this goofy character just standing there protecting everyone from a giant mechanical monster who destroyed an entire city block. It doesn't take long before the other Freedom Fighters show up and spring into action, with Bunny being way too cool as she jumps out of the back of the jet and then uses her cybernetic limbs to fly towards the attack scene. Once there, Bunny takes on Titan Metal Sonic, and as she does, this other character named Nagus shows up who is a bit of his own mess, and I could literally spend the entire day talking about him, but I'm gonna save that for another time, so here's the TLDR. He's basically a bat, but not a busty bat like the other bat that we know from Sonic, but instead a kind of magical bat, who is a villain as well, and at this moment he wants to take over the city for himself, so he wants to take out Titan Metal Sonic so that the place that he wants to lay claim to isn't destroyed. Quick little bit of an editor's note, but I guess I got a little bit too distracted by the Busty Bat because I forgot to mention what he does next, which is that he combines Bunny with the Titan Metal Sonic to create this giant crystallized golem to protect the city from the Death Egg. And while all of this happens, chaos ensues within the Death Egg as they've lost all contact with this gigantic robot who kills. Eggman wants to continue the assault, and as Snively tries to talk some sense into him, Eggman snaps his fingers and Mecha Sally snaps into action as she threatens Snively for her new master. 
The Death Egg fires a massive blast at the city, which also destroys the tornado as well as the jet the other freedom fighters were in. But the crystallized golem takes the blow which saves the city and leaves the golem destroyed, with Bunny on the ground only to be rescued by Best Girl Cream. Sonic and Tails rush down from the sky to check up on the down jet to find that luckily everybody is okay, and for some reason, Amy here is titled as the Magical Hammer Girl, which I mean, it isn't something that I would have called her before, but I'm probably gonna start doing so now, because that's a fun name. Sonic, barely able to stand, starts to leave once he finds out that everyone is okay so that he can go and save Sally, and Tails explains what happens to the rest of the group. Although Sonic wants to leave to save Sally, his friends tearfully convince him to stay as Tails reasons that they're gonna save Sally one day, but they just can't afford to do it right now. Begrudgingly, Sonic agrees to walk back towards the destroyed city hand in hand with Amy, which I thought was kinda sweet looking, but also while zooming in on this panel, it shows Antoine who has his arm around Tails to help him walk, but it looks really weird when viewed up close, and I mean that's about it, I just wanted to show it. Like I said, I'm not going to focus too much on Nagus and all of this stuff happening down there, but people are basically cheering him on as his magic helps save the city, which causes a bit of an outburst from Sonic, which then leads him to explain what happened aboard the Death Egg, which causes a lot of distress to the current king, who is Sally's brother Elias. Because I mean, he just heard that his sister was roboticized, and he thought that roboticizing wasn't even a thing that was possible anymore. This leads Nagus to take the throne, and a lot of stress to be caused towards Elias as he tries to figure out how he's going to explain this to his parents. But before much else happens here, Sonic and Amy rush off to go see Bunny. Shortly after seeing Bunny, Sonic comes up with a plan to rescue Sally, and leaves Tails and Amy behind. Sonic's plan starts with him rushing off to the Freedom Fighters HQ, where he tries to reach out to Nicole, who is giving him a bit of the virtual cold shoulder. And she only responds to him through text like an Omegle chat, where she explains through a string of texts about how her body and her best friend are now gone because of what had occurred on the Death Egg. She isn't necessarily blaming Sonic for this, but she is upset over what had happened. Sonic explains that he'll get Sally back, but first he needs to see Knuckles, and so he asks her to request Knuckles to open a warp ring to Angel Island. Things with Knuckles, however, don't go super great, because when he finds out what had happened, he goes on to blame Sonic for not being able to save Sally, as well as not coming to warn Angel Island about the Death Egg. But Sonic does bring up a pretty good point, which is that Angel Island is in the sky, so there's a good chance that they would see the Death Egg coming. Sonic explains that his plan is to use a warp ring in order to get aboard the Death Egg, and when Knuckles refuses it, it leaves the two of them arguing as Knuckles continues to refuse as there are too many risky factors and you need to be able to know exactly where to go with a warp ring. Sonic then takes a bit of a cheap shot as he proclaims that if it had to do with saving Knuckles' ancestors, that he would be all for it, as he's still searching for the missing guardians that Finitivus got rid of. Shameless plug, but I do have a video on Dr. Finitivus if you want to know what happened to those guardians. Meanwhile, aboard the Death Egg, Eggman works on upgrading Mecha Sally, much to Snively's dismay as he tries to explain that the amount of damage that the Death Egg has sustained has left them in a pretty poor place to be focusing on this when they should be focusing on the bigger picture. Due to Eggman's dismissive behavior towards this, Snively decides that he's going to take matters into his own hands. The page ends with a very ominous picture of Eggman as he prepares to work on Sally by changing her mechanical body. Now, while this is happening, the Freedom Fighters have finally gotten together, and they head out for an all-out assault on the Death Egg, which ensues in honestly a pretty cool fight as Tails takes to the sky as Sonic, Amy Antoine, and the rest face off against Eggman's forces on the ground. The Freedom Fighters make some pretty decent headway into this assault, but this isn't of much concern to Eggman as he sends in his two soldiers, which are Metal Sonic and the new weaponized Mecha Sally. The new Mecha Sally charges towards Tails and Amy, who can't bring themselves to attack their former friend, which then leads to her cutting through the tornado and destroying it with a pair of hidden blades within her arms. During this, Sonic tries to rush to their aid, but is stopped by Metal Sonic. Eggman then changes his orders as he decides to send Metal Sonic to detonate on Sally's brother's vehicle in order to kill him, while Mecha Sally fights Sonic to keep him busy. With everyone tangled up, Antoine is the only one left to protect the king, and he doesn't hesitate for a moment as he pulls Metal Sonic off of the vehicle, which then results in Metal Sonic detonating in the air with Antoine. Antoine's body goes flying and lands limp on the ground with his sword next to him. I wasn't joking when I said that this is one of the darkest arcs in the comics run, and these losses really do feel major. Antoine isn't killed per se, but he is put into a permanent coma for the rest of this run, so I mean, it's pretty safe to say that he is kind of dead. The same way that characters in Yu-Gi-Oh were sent off to the Shadow Realm to be never seen again. This sudden explosion leaves everyone in shock as Eggman laughs maniacally aboard his ship, but to all of his subordinates' surprise, Eggman then decides that 
he's done here, and he's not going to attack anymore as he's now taken out two of the Freedom Fighters, and this has surely destroyed their spirits. Eggman reasons that he doesn't want to push things any further for now, to risk losing any of the ground that he's gained, and this leaves Snively very unhappy, as he decides now, for real this time, that he's going to take Eggman down as he takes things into his own hands. It sounds a little bit like a broken record, but this time he does actually mean it. Everyone on the ground is understandably left in absolute shock as Sonic stands dumbfounded as he watches friends cry around Antoine's nearly dead body. Now, there is a bit here that follows what happens with Eggman and Snively, but it doesn't have much to do with Sally, and this video is on track to be one of my longest videos so far. And so, to keep things short, I've decided to split that into another, shorter video that goes into a different series that evaluates the weirder Sonic comics. If you're curious, you can find it in the card above, but if not, you're not actually missing all that much, as Mecha Sally plays more of a minor character role in that. But basically, all you do need to know that will be relevant a little bit later on into this is that Snively is basically dead at this point, and Eggman has made a very underutilized group called the Mecha Series, which Mecha Sally leads, and I think they have very cool designs. Anyway, back to the proper Sonic story. So now that Eggman has dealt with Snively, he's ready to get back to business, which means that the Death Egg is back and Eggman means business, as he announces that he's come to kidnap everyone to roboticize them. Luckily for all of these citizens, despite the fact that Sonic is in a funk and not willing to come and save the day, the other best girl, Amy, shows up and she taps into her anger, which leads to her slapping Sonic as she just lays the boots to him as she breaks down the importance of the Freedom Fighters, as well as everything they fought for to get him out of his funk after encountering these major losses in their last couple missions. Sonic and team rush to the nearby town to stop them from being kidnapped by Eggman. Sonic then triumphantly exclaims that regardless of what Eggman does, he won't stop until he's honored all the sacrifices of everybody who's fallen, which honestly, that's a really cool line and I wish we heard more stuff like this. It's at this moment that Mecha Sally returns for a rematch, but this time Sonic isn't holding back, and he goes right into it as he and Amy go to fight Sally while they spit out some fun banter between each other, which honestly I think is a lot of fun and shows really well off the dynamic between Sonic and Amy is more than just Amy fangirling over Sonic as she tries to get him to date her. Seeing these two bravely fight, it then leads the citizens to gain the courage to stand up and rage against the machines, and although they end up do pushing back, enough to the point where Eggman has to retreat, unfortunately, Sonic doesn't quite manage to get a hold of Sally before she flies away again. And this is gonna be a reoccurring theme, unfortunately. We're gonna take a quick skip ahead after this as Mecha Sally shows up again as she terrorizes the wolf pack, but once again, as I said, she ends up escaping. Unbeknownst to Sonic, this attack was all a part of a distraction to get Sonic and his friends away so that the Death Egg could attack their capital city while they were gone. But what he didn't know is that there's a new Team Freedom ready to fight and protect everyone. The new Team Freedom does a pretty good job at overall taking on the individual robots that Eggman sends down before he sends down his Metal Series minus Mecha Sally to attack. Just as an aside though, I love the way Metal Amy looks as she flies with like a rocket coming out of her dress and Metal Tails looks really fun here too. I wish we got to see more of them, like I said though, they're super criminally underutilized just like Metal Scourge which we had seen in a previous video. But honestly, these robots are kind of disappointing when they actually fight, because they don't stand much of a chance as they find themselves easily defeated by this new freedom group. Along their way back, Sonic and Tails have another snag with Titan Metal Sonic. But I don't really want to focus on this too much because it kind of ties into Knuckles and we'll get to him one day. So I'd like to get back to Sally, except, oh, <laughs> we can't, because here's a running theme across Archie Sonic. We've reached the classic stage where Ken Penders ruined a lot of stuff with his lawsuit, and so this story kinda gets cut short. So just as Sonic and his friends make it to Mecha Sally, everything again starts to go white just like it did when Eggman had reset the universe, and suddenly Sonic finds himself in another world, which is crossed over with Mega Man interestingly, and it's away from everything we've seen, and everybody again is missing their memories. So anyways, although I'd like to talk about it one day, let's skip to the part where the two blue boys are now yellow boys, and they super bro fist bump each other, and cause the super genesis wave. This Genesis wave would go on to wipe the world of everything Ken Penders and create a soft reboot for the Archie Sonic into a fresh new state. So, now Sonic is back in his world, but things are slightly different, such as the fact that Sally's now learned how to tie up the front of her vest. Oh, and I guess more importantly, she's not a robot anymore, which is kind of disappointing that we would never get a conclusion to this story, and we're left on this anticlimactic end. 
But if I'm totally honest, I was getting pretty tired of this arc. I remember not being super crazy about it when I had read it originally, but when rereading it now to get my notes, I really was losing interest fast. It starts off super cool and very interesting, as probably one of my favorite Ian Flynn stories with Sally dying and all these major events happening. But it goes on to being pretty weak, which is unfortunate because like I said, I like Ian Flynn's writing, but this definitely didn't feel like a game near the end. There's a lot of the same stuff that happens with what feels like just different backdrops. Like how they'll manage to get to Mecha Sally, they'll fight with her, but just before they can save her, she gets away. Or Eggman will attack with his death egg, but just before he can be stopped, he escapes, and it felt like I got to the point where I was rereading this and it felt like I was inside of my own Genesis wave as I reread what felt like the same story with only a slight few tweaks here and there. Which is a shame, because like I said, I really like the start of this arc, but it just didn't go anywhere for me. What is kind of cool though is it's not technically over, because there is a point post-Genesis Wave where Sally in this new continuity ends up remembering the old world and what she had done, which causes her some trouble as she tries to deal with the fact that she tried to kill a ton of people and worked with Eggman. I just wish that we got to see her get rescued, or some kind of more satisfying ending. Anyway, we've got that story all wrapped up. I hope you enjoyed it, but I have a few fun facts before I let you go. In issue 231, we're shown that Sonic's hands are blue rather than beige, which is kind of interesting and it answers a question that I had in a previous video. This also isn't the first time that Sally was roboticized, although the other time it did happen, Sonic and his friends teamed up with a dragon and they had worked on saving her with a much less impressive looking Mecha Sally. Anyway, in conclusion, that's one of the darkest arcs and the last arc actually before the Super Genesis wave goes off, I mean if you don't count Mega Man I guess. And I'm really glad that I got to show it off. It's been a long time since I read through it, and although I'm not crazy about the sort of late stages of the story, it was a lot of fun overall, and it probably still stands as being one of my favorite arcs of all time throughout the Archie Sonic comics. So if you enjoyed it, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. Tell your grandma if you want. But I mean, you don't have to. I'm not your boss. You can do whatever you want to do at the end of the day. I hope you have a good one, though. But much to the... But much to the... Blah, blah, blah. But much to the... Ah, oh my God. What the heck? But much to the... This, but much to their dismay. Okay, now I just have to say that faster. It doesn't take long before the other, the other, the French is leaking out of me. It doesn't take long before the other freedom fighters show up. Begr begrudgingly, there's a word that I only ever read and never said out loud. Begrudgingly, begrudgingly, that's how you say it. Yeah, that's, that should sound. Begrudgingly. <sighs> just said it like four times or three times. 